Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number four in the directory traversal module titled File Path Traversal, Traversal Sequences Stripped with Superfluous URL Decode. All right, let's get started. This lab contains a file path traversal vulnerability in the display of product images. The application blocks input containing path traversal sequences it then performs a URL decode of the input before using it. To solve the lab, retrieve the contents of the etc passwd file. All right, so our target goal over here is to retrieve the content of the passwd file. And the way we're going to do that is by exploiting a file path traversal vulnerability. Now, there are some defensive mechanisms, so it does block um, input that contains the path traversal sequence, so we won't be able to use that. And then it performs a URL decode, which will become important in a bit when we do exploit the vulnerability. All right, let's access the lab. Now, notice over here, I'm using the inbuilt browser in Burp, and so all my requests are already passing through my proxy. Okay, so notice over here the application retrieves images that are displayed um, in the browser and it retrieves them using this URL. Now, whenever you see any place in the application where it's potentially accessing the file system on the server, you should definitely test it for path traversal vulnerabilities amongst other vulnerabilities like LFI or RFI. So we're going to send this request to repeater and test it there. Okay, so if you hit send right over here, you could see it's a 200 OK response and it displays the content of this file right over here. So um, the first thing that we're going to do is see if it accepts any absolute paths. So etc slash wd, hit enter and it says no such file. So the next thing we're going to do is see if it accepts us getting out of that directory. So using the path traversal sequence, which we know it's not going to accept based on the description of the lab, but let's try it. Okay, we get no such file. Next, we're going to see if it allows us to bypass that defense using the technique that we learned in the previous lab. So if it non-recursively checks for that sequence, hit send and it does not. So the next step that I'm gonna try is remove that bypass technique and then encode it. Sometimes when it's encoded, the application checks for that sequence on the encoded text, which obviously is not there because it's encoded. And so it allows us to bypass the defensive mechanisms that are in place. So I'm gonna say URL encode all characters, hit send. And we still get no such file. And the reason is because as the description listed, it actually decodes it and then it blocks um, any instances of the path traversal sequence. And so let's encode it again. So convert selection, URL, and then URL encode all key characters, hit send and see if that works. And it does. So you could see over here, it dumped the content of the fastwd file. And if we go back to the application, it says, congratulations, you solved the lab. So the only reason this worked is because it only decodes it once. And then based on the first decoding, it checks for that sequence. But if that was the case, this is what the backend is doing. So, so convert selection and then URL and URL decode, so it's decoding one, it's decoding it once, and then it's looking for this sequence right over here, and it doesn't find it because it's encoded, and so it bypasses their weak defense mechanism. All right, so we successfully completed the exercise by exploiting the vulnerability manually. Now let's script it in Python. If you would like to see a detailed version of the video where we first exploit the vulnerability manually and then script it in Python, check out the video linked on the screen. Also make sure to hit the subscribe button and check out my course if you're interested in seeing more videos like this one. Thank you and see you in the next video.